we have seen it all many times before we've watched similar sets of pictures and familiar drawings. Uh, it's because some of us seem never to give up in search for the Great Pyramid's mysterious uh, purpose. And now, uh, while looking for yet another chance to find something that would bring us uh, closer to enlightenment, I should say that this search appears uh, to be over. Welcome to my presentation. I will present uh, many brand new ideas. I'm going to introduce an original uh, theory so far unheard of. Uh, this uh, theory rests on technology which becomes available to general uh, population. I am uh, going to describe mostly a symbolistic blueprint of the Great Pyramid's uh, capabilities, uh, but even though I'm going to make it uh, easy, I can see a problem. Uh, what I have for you is absolutely new, and it far exceeds everything you have heard so far. There will be many surprises. Uh, this is why I am slightly afraid that before you have enough time for a particular concept to sink in, you will be encountered with a series of follow-up surprises, one after another, which could make the whole exercise too overwhelming. So, I plan first to provide some examples of technology in question, and then to interpret some of the Dendera light images. Uh, this way, when we next get into the Great Pyramids uh, system, you will have a fairly stable idea of what I am uh, talking about. I believe this new look at the technologies of ancient Egypt will in time allow for discovery of a range of purpose the oldest and the most magnificent Egyptian pyramids were built for. Uh, join me. I think there is a good chance you will be interested. Uh, yes, it was uh, true. After all, there is a great treasure to be found in Great Pyramid of Giza. It is hidden in plain sight. You just need to know what to look for. No gold, precious stones or artifacts that would make you rich. The greatest treasure of the Khufu's pyramid is abandoned thousands of years ago, a system of free energy production, perhaps one of the greatest treasures in the whole history of man. When you look at the Giza pyramid's internal chambers and passages, it is not too difficult to discover that this must be the parts of a machine. However, the Great Pyramid utilizes technology that isn't yet wholly understood by the official science. You would need a suitable understanding of quantum physics or possess experience of practical exposure to similar technology before taking a jump into the details of Great Pyramid's electricity production capabilities. My explanations are a result of practical experiences surfacing from within mind control environment. The phenomenon that employs similar technologies, although for totally different purpose. Also, and this could be important confirmation of my theory, we should be aware of a number of small-scale free energy projects available for viewing in YouTube. Suffice to say, many of them are real and workable. You'll be able to understand the principles behind the operation after watching this presentation. While looking at the Great Pyramid, one needs to think of gravitation resonance, standing resonance, and a scalar way. A pyramid system of chambers, shafts, and passages is to be seen as a scalar wave interferometer, capable of producing wireless electricity. I am going to explain its processing sequence step by step, but first we need to get prepared. What is a scalar wave and standing resonance? In modern times, scalar waves were used by Nikola Tesla for his electricity projects. If you read or hear about a scalar wave, a Tesla's wave or longitudinal wave, all these descriptions relate to the same kind of wave. So, this is a longitudinal type of wave with unusual properties, capable of carrying information and energy. It is uh, capable of penetrating any solid objects, including a Faraday's uh, cage. Uh, the only thing stopping scalar wave I found so far is Shangit, a special kind of uh, coal rock found only in Russia. 
Uh, however, I suspected only redirects Iskela away somewhere else instead of stopping them completely. Associated with Iskela wave over unity effect signifies that the further Iskela wave travels, the more energy it collects. This phenomenon has been used over the years in many energy saving devices with the output power much greater than its input. A scalar wave may be used for wireless electricity transport, as Nikola Tesla did it 120 years ago. A scalar wave is a vortex. Think of the spiral staircase underneath Tesla's wooden cliff tower. Nikola Tesla indeed invented a very original method of scalar wave creation. He used to create it with a wire in Tesla's coil and, believe it or not, with the stairs underneath his tower. Importantly, the wave we are going to talk about here, while being shaped as a vortex, does not adhere to a physical body and remains invisible. Uh, terms such as standing scalar wave or standing resonance or resonant coupling or magnetically coupled resonance relate to the same physical phenomenon. It might have to do with something known in physics as a quantum entanglement. Change in state of one particle may cause change in state of a particle positioned even light years away. It happens only when the particles are observed. This is instant reaction, and Albert Einstein had a problem with it. He called it a spooky action at a distance. Some wave traveling between particles would have to be faster than speed of light, and this would be disproving his relativity theory. As far I know, Einstein decided that particles possess some information in a form of a hidden variable which allows for those changes and a wave faster than speed of light doesn't exist. He was right in one respect, as in time this mysterious information showed to be identical resonance of both particles. It could be caused by the very fact of their observation. However, recently we hear more often that both particles must be connected with a wave. It is a scalar wave, which naturally must be faster than speed of light. So, standing resonance appears between two points, or two bodies sharing exactly the same synchronized resonance. There may be various resonant sources involved in creating this type of phenomenon, for example electromagnetic or mechanical such as sound. A standing scalar wave travels both ways between the resonances as a carrier of energy and information. Thanks to it, it can be used for wireless sound communication or electricity transfers. I have met with various examples of this phenomena. Most of them require elaborate explaining, so I have chosen an example close to home, very likely known to everyone. If you were to use two cups a phone connected with a string for voice communication, then in fact you are to employ a phenomenon of standing resonance. Now, what's interesting here, and it is very important, usually people believe that a voice is carried over the string. In fact, a scientist would tell you exactly the same thing, but that's not the case. A string is only a resonance source. A stretched string creates and synchronizes identical resonance of the cups. In this case, this is a mechanical type of resonant coupling, and a voice is not to be carried by the string. A voice communication occurs with the help of a standing scalar wave, a traveling in straight line between the cups, capable of both ways instant energy and information exchange. Technology of wireless power transportation is already in practical use by modern industry. At the beginning of this century, the scientists at the MIT conducted successful experiments with wireless electricity transfers. In 2007, it started a new industry with a great outlook for the future. 
Uh, there are industrial applications of this uh, technology, uh, such as wireless uh, battery charging, uh, over distances much longer than used by the popular wireless phone charging uh, devices. I uh, believe I remember reading in the past that MIT experiments involved mechanically coupled uh, resonance. Uh, but at present, such devices allow for wireless electricity transfer between coupled electromagnetic resonators. Uh, there is uh, one more really vital for the purpose of this uh, presentation information uh, coming from the scientific uh, sources. Uh, following a great German scientist, uh, Professor Konstantin Mail, Apart from a commonly known Tesla's kind of scalar wave carrying electricity, there also exists a magnetic scalar wave. It is important to consider that by default, magnetic scalar wave is oriented perpendicularly to electric scalar wave. We need to remember about it while discussing how the Great Pyramid produced wireless electricity. I thought it, this may be quite meaningless for you, while it's really important to remember about. I prepared a photo of one of the YouTube's electricity projects to explain it. As you see, the whole system relies on a field created by the largest magnet. Two medium-sized magnets create a standing scalar wave between them, and this small part between them is what makes this system work. It is bringing into detectable existence the electrical scalar wave in direction perpendicular to magnetic standing scalar wave between medium-sized magnets. A scalar wave is like a neutrino, incomparably smaller than a single electron, uh, traveling and obstructed through any objects. Uh, we need some resonance to get hold on it. Before going into how the Great Pyramid produced electricity, maybe we should know how it was seen from its user's point of view. Bear with me for a while, please. It will make your understanding of the Great Pyramid system much easier. The journey into ancient Egypt's wireless electricity starts in a niches below Hathor Temple in Dendera with a set of stone reliefs depicting a famous Egyptian light. In there we will find a few elements of technology used in the Great Pyramid. This carved in stone motif resembling electric light devices caused much discussion between mainstream and unconventional researchers. There should be no reason for it, as both sides of this discussion are right. Dendra light depicts sophisticated electrical technology and at the same time it uses a set of symbols from the so-called Egyptian mythology. Ancient Egyptians were using images to convey their messages. This language of imagery is hard to translate because we easily get lost in its interpretations. However, a linear translation, which holds its logic from the beginning to the end, we should be treated seriously. We are going now to translate some of the images telling a story of where Egyptian electricity was coming from and how it was used. I am to describe only a part of the image found at the north wall of the south crypt. Very likely, the essential part of the imagery is older than a temple itself. The writings above it describe traditional Egyptian ceremonies. Uh, this is why we should omit the names of the deities and descriptions of uh, holy objects uh, while concentrating on interpretation of the images instead. Uh, at uh, first, our attention is directed at unusual character with a body of a baboon and a frog's uh, face uh, holding two identical uh, blades. Uh, this uh, translation starts with assumption that this creature depicts the phenomenon of resonance put to practical use. Uh, two blades symbolize two resonators sharing the same parameters. It is to depict a resonant coupling, a technique which creates a standing scalar wave. 
it may take a little while to adjust your way of thinking of it, uh, but in fact the work of a blade can indeed be interpreted as an effect of resonance. Uh, because we want to see the left side of image as a uh, depiction of electric light bulb, expectedly at the right side we seek uh, how a resonant coupling represented by baboon frog creature uh, came into existence. To create a standing scalar wave we need at least gravitation and resonance. Uh, this way, uh, starting from the far right side, a straight vertical line is interpreted as a gravitation. There is nobody holding this object, so it is easy to treat it as an independent phenomenon. Gravitation is a primary condition for the ancient electrical system. Uh, next we see a character holding a staff with a snake's head. It is interpreted as the gravitation handler. Uh, the staff position at an angle at its snake's head symbolizes uh, that gravitation is to be handled as a wave. Uh, this image implies that the character makes some use of uh, gravitation. Uh, and next, yet another object being not held by anybody, looking like a huge blade, some really big knife or sword perhaps is interpreted as a phenomenon of resonance. A characteristic cut at the bottom of this object gives away its meaning. Shortly we will see in a pyramid that similar cutouts are used as a resonance tool. Now turning our attention to the left side below the baboon frog character, there is hieroglyphic writing which usually is interpreted as a warning against using this technology for a wrong purpose. It may be so. Indeed, this technology could be and it has been used for very wrong, immoral things. However, the writing could also be interpreted as a declaration of the system protection, or, or better yet, an ancient device manual. For example, a resonant coupling requires security of the resonators and safe environment. There is a translation of the hieroglyphs which describes a promise given to the baboon frog identity to slaughter all its enemies in a country with a knife. In this case, a knife may depict a weapon of resonance, a tool to keep the system defendable. Slaughtering its enemies would mean keeping a resonant coupling free from interference. This interpretation of the hieroglyphs brings a very interesting question. Was wireless electricity available across all of the ancient Egypt's land? Uh, then there is a to see a light bark supported by a character on the far left who could be seen as a technology giant. Uh, it appears to hold a clear bulb seated in a lotus flower shaped object uh, with a snake coming from it. Uh, it all seems like an elegantly traditional uh, ancient Egyptian way uh, to describe energy wave seen as a snake uh, which comes from the primordial universe portrayed as a lotus flower and employed to work in a light bulb. Uh, the bottom of this uh, bark resembles an electrical uh, wire. Uh, for the purpose of this interpretation it remains insignificant if this system uh, was or was not employing short wire, which uh, could have been used as a connection with a wireless electricity receiver. Uh, the remaining images describe uh, how this energy is delivered and uh, protected. Uh, a pair of uh, twins uh, holding hands uh, is a symbol of power deliverance, which happens uh, through a standing scalar wave. Uh, a sitting wealthy woman uh, facing to the right is a symbol of energy. All three appear to have tops of their heads connected with the bulb to signify where power inside it has uh, come from. Uh, a little person kneeling on the rectangle-shaped object uh, with both arms raised up 
uh, is a power availability symbol. The circle on its head depicts air. Uh, this is to state that the energy is available wirelessly. The raised up arms signify that the resonant coupling is the delivery method. Uh, finally, we see a jet pillar symbol. It is there for the purpose of system stability. A wireless energy needs to be insulated from unwanted resonance interference so to protect the whole system from being rendered useless or even dangerous. Two arms at the top of the jet pillar touching snake inside the bulb depict that the light inside the bulb is a product of a scalar wave. Below it, jet pillar itself works as a barrier, stopping outside resonance from contact with the system resonance. That's in case both were sharing the same parameters. It is the system ending uh, borderline of this name it uh, gravitronic circuit. Uh, looking at it all, we can see a lot of dualities. Uh, baboon uh, bodied uh, frog faced uh, creature with a pair of identical blades. Uh, a pair of twins holding uh, hands. Two pairs of raised up arms. In each case, it is a symbol of resonant coupling and standing scalar wave. It is a baseline technique which brings this system into existence. While interpreting, we see that one important thing is missing from the whole picture. It is how wireless electrical energy is derived from the resonant coupling. A scalar wave between the resonant coupling travels back and forth between resonances. It may be of gravitational, magnetic type, and a method is needed to detect and to exploit electrical scalar wave hidden in there. We are going to see how it was done while exploring a system inside the Great Pyramid. Here it is. The glorious, mysterious wonder. Nobody really could prove how old it is and who built it. Maybe one day we will know for sure, but for now we at least should know its main purpose. Let's get into it, and I can promise you a theory that will survive against all odds, simply because it is real. How would you get hold on a gravitational wave? How would you employ it for your needs? That's what a pyramid is for. A gravitation in pyramid's mind body differs from the gravitation inside its chambers and passages. When I was a child, I imagined that ancient people didn't know any better than building simple stone on a stone structures. Was I wrong? A pyramid is a boosting body of gravitation application. The gravitational fields inside the pyramid, such as chambers, are the catchments of gravitation suitable for resonant processing away from the external conditions. Between the oldest monuments of ancient Egypt, pyramid is a tool to create products out of the resources of gravitation. Let's see main parts of the Khufu pyramid's energy system. Gravitational antennas in the king's and queen's chambers. Standing scalar wave between the king's and queen's chambers. Electrical scalar wave in the passage leading to the queen's chamber. Electrical scalar wave distribution system in the grand gallery. A heart of the Khufu pyramid's energy system is the one seemingly not discussed so far. This is a distance between the king's and queen's chambers. Looking at those chambers and the passages, we didn't realize that a standing scalar wave could easily travel through stone blocks between the chambers. It is a wave which travels exclusively both ways between the chambers as energy and information carrier. Some specific conditions are needed to construct this kind of a standing wave. Most of all, the same synchronized resonance of the king's and queen's chambers. Such synchronization would take place naturally, 
if exactly similar chambers were to be exposed equally to the same resonance source. However, the Great Pyramid's chambers differ in size, shape and quality of a building stone. Uh, this is why we should think not of the walls, uh, but rather treat them as three-dimensional fields, with both sharing the same resonance. Resonance in the 3D-shaped Queen's Chamber's gravitational field should be of default pyramid's value as it is placed in its center. Some reasons for which the King's Chamber's gravitational field would possibly need some adjustments are its larger size and the area above its ceiling which absorbs resonance. If the king's chamber would need some resonance adjustments, perhaps the so-called sarcophagus in this chamber may be useful for this purpose, if, for example, some sand be added or removed from it. Something very interesting. In the world of clandestine science, the pyramid model is being used for calculation purposes. It serves as a, some sort of geometrical equation which makes the technology much more efficient. It all appears to depend on the pyramid's chamber's orientation. However, this could become a broad and unconfirmed subject, hijacking focus aside from the main theme of this presentation. In short, I do suspect that the chambers may be positioned with attention given to the gravitation directions, towards and out from Earth's center, and to the influence of Earth's magnetic field rotation. It seems that the pyramid builders strived for a coupling within the gravitationally balanced structure that preserved the energetic balance between space and the Earth one which doesn't obstruct the environment. Going back to the main subject, the magnetic resonant coupling creates a standing scalar wave between the chambers, which is used for the purpose of exploitation of the energetic properties of gravitation. It is the fundamental element of the pyramid's energy system indispensable for further acquirement of wireless electricity from gravitational waves. We have met with many misleading ideas on the subject of the Great Giza Pyramid. The first one, obviously, is describing this pyramid as a pharaoh's final resting place. It seems to me that the only thing buried in a king's chamber's sarcophagus was some sand, although some more recent theories may too be a little distracting. The so-called ventilation shafts didn't in the first place serve the purpose of ventilation. In fact, this is a system of gravitational antennas, a part of the energy system which collects gravitational waves to be interfered with standing scalar wave between the king's and the queen's chambers. Interfering the waves means a crossing, stacking them together in a bunch of waves, which if visible should really look like a multi-strained helix. I can imagine that when gravitational wave from the shafts is interfered into a resonant coupling between the chambers, uh, then the whole cutouts of uh, gravitation carrying shape characteristics of the shafts are incorporated within the coupling. And by all means, all this happens because of the magnetic properties of the magnetically coupled resonance. It is a well-known fact that to create a scalar wave, the properties of the interfered waves need to be of different values. The shafts are on different lengths, placed at dissimilar angles and with different kinds of endings. That clearly suggests the practical purpose. Many researchers have been expressing their surprise with the fact that while the pyramid is constructed with great precision, the shafts are sometimes a little rough, 
not cut out properly, even slightly bended. Uh, meanwhile, uh, this is an essential construction method. Uh, because of this accomplishment, uh, gravitational waves do not resonate in shafts, uh, so to reach the resonant uh, coupling in form of uh, pure resource. Uh, similar shafts have been constructed underneath the Nikola Tesla's uh, Warden Cliff Tower. In this case, gravitational wave interfering used to take place underground. In both cases, a device performing this type of work is named a scalar interferometer. At this occasion, it is worth to mention about essential twofold quality of the pyramid's elements. Wherever an element of the system engages a resonance, it has smooth, polished surfaces. On the other hand, Surfaces of the elements used for wave conducting and general servicing are rough and unpolished to avoid unwanted resonance. Another important idea, it is about so-called relieving chambers above the king's chamber. For a long time, we were told that their task is to prevent the chambers sealing against collapse. Surely, that's not the case. Also, there are no energy-creating abilities in this construction alone, and its purpose is totally different. The main purpose of this part is to neutralize resonance in the area above the king's chamber. It is an equivalent of the Egyptian jet pillar, in this particular case created with the use of gravitational fields inside the shallow chambers. A very characteristic property of this device is great unevenness of each of the chamber's flows. It causes multi-stage resonance blockade in the area above the king's chamber. This is essential method of the system. Important supposition, a device constructed for similar purpose were now missing multiple lowered doors in antechamber, a passage leading to King's chamber. A typical functional property of the standing scalar wave is its bidirectional communication ability. Information can be sent both ways simultaneously using the coupling as a transmission media. So, for example, if we are to remember about two cups string a phone, looking first at the left side of resonant coupling between the pyramids' chambers, people standing by the chambers could talk to each other without the use of any other technology, simply by speaking directly towards the chambers. In case of this particular construction, however, while looking next at the right side of resonant coupling between the chambers, a person standing by the king's chamber would not be able to talk with a person standing by the queen's chamber. At the north side of the resonant coupling, where the electricity acquirement and distribution system is being placed, Information conveying can take place only one way, from the level of the Queen's chamber up towards the level of the King's chamber. The relieving chambers and antechambers multiple lowered doors serve this exact purpose by the way of blocking resonance above and at the entrance side of the King's chamber. Information taking place by the right side of the king's chamber cannot be intercepted by the coupled resonance, so it won't be sent down towards the queen's chamber. However, gravitational waves drawn in the king's chamber shafts can still be interfered. It is so because waves connect with this chamber via openings in the chamber's walls. All this is a very important condition for this energy system to be workable, because as we will see soon, this construction method prevents against catastrophic for the system about churn of the electrical scalar wave in undesired direction. This is a right time to ask what electrical scalar wave? 
And so far we only discussed resonant coupling and gravitational waves interference. And now I need to point to Professor Constantin May's uh, discoveries. He discovered a magnetic scalar wave. Uh, Professor Mayle found that scalar waves are directed and that a magnetic scalar wave is directed perpendicularly to electric scalar wave. In one of his internet interviews, uh, Professor Mayle stated that longitudinal waves vibrating in the direction of the propagation exist in gravitation. We should uh, consider that resonant coupling of the chambers is of uh, magnetic type and corresponding electric scalar wave should exist in direction perpendicular to the coupling. All we need is some resonance to bring it into detectable existence. Uh, this cannot happen near the King's chamber because it is shielded with uh, resonance blockades. The place for electric scalar wave should be near the Queen's chamber, in passage leading to this chamber to be exact. In its original form, this wave should be resonantly tied with the coupling. Then we have this characteristically cobble shaped niche in eastern wall of the Queen's chamber, which allows for independent modeling of electrical scalar wave in a passage. The niche is in fact a gravitational resonator, which makes electrical scalar wave in the passage independent from resonant properties of the chamber's coupling. Because of it, electrical scalar wave becomes energy, which now may freely move between the chambers, in a manner just as we would expect it to happen with voice communication described before. The cobalt niche corresponds in straight vertical line with the top of the grand gallery. The great Giza pyramid is a perfect structure with each element designed exactly for specific purpose. The roughness of the floor in a passage leading to the Queen's chamber is there to prevent from resonance. It shields electric away from undesired resonant contact from underneath. The last element of this energy system is to distribute electrical scalar wave outside of the pyramid. In the floor of the Grand Gallery, 28 feet high passage leading upwards towards the King's Chamber, there are 27 pairs of slots, which in the past housed some unknown devices. There are many researchers who assume those devices were energy transferring resonators. Uh, this idea seems to be clearly confirmed by evident deep burnt markings appearing on the ceiling of the Grand Gallery. We need to remember again that the coupling between the Queen's and King's Chambers is resonantly limited at the King's Chambers level. Because of this limitation, despite the coupling possessing a natural ability to communicate both ways, produced by the coupling electrical scalar wave in a passage leading to the Queen's Chamber, has ability to move only one way upwards towards the level of the Grand Gallery. A huge height and cobble shape of the gallery's ceiling allows for very specific, unusual resonance values of the Grand Gallery 3D-shaped gravitational field. It was needed by the external power searching devices. It is here in the Grand Gallery where the electrical scalar wave arrives from the passage to Queen's Chamber down below, transported by the resonant coupling between King's and Queen's Chambers. One of the parameters independently modeling this electrical wave is deepness of the corbel niche in the Queen's Chamber, exactly the same with the wideness of the Grand Gallery's ceiling. This is how it becomes detectable in the Grand Gallery. Further away from the Queen's Chamber, the electrical scalar wave's transportation ability keeps getting lower. The Grand Gallery is aligned with the passage at an angle, allowing to make use even of those lower communication abilities of the electrical scalar wave. One can easily assume the missing resonators were used as some kind of uh, power points, which could have been resonantly coupled with devices outside of the pyramid. 
Uh, at this point is worth considering uh, why the Great Pyramid is in fact eight-sided. Uh, at first sight, this feature should allow for better gravitation lensing. Uh, one of the reasons may be the care was taken that resonance of the really huge walls uh, wouldn't become accidentally coupled with identically resonating nature's objects and phenomena. Uh, in the past, many times I considered if avoidance of vowels in ancient Egyptian writing, at the same time very likely in the speech, uh, was in fact dictated by similar concerns. Uh, so it seems that the whole flat pyramid site is much more prone to accidental resonant coupling than two inward halves resonating at different angles. Another reason in the same respect is a safer, less obstructive way of coupling individual outside power users with the grand gallery's presumed resonators. Also, very likely, this construction method could be understood as a measure preventing against taking over the pyramid's production capabilities by outside source. The underground chamber seems to be there to serve a purpose of controlling environmental effects underneath the Great Pyramid on its resonance. It is to detect unwanted resonance before it reaches the pyramid. It also might have helped in a now totally unknown way with keeping a resonant coupling of the chambers in optimal condition uh, if the pyramid service workers were to follow the Earth's magnetic pole movements. The chamber's rough, irregular shape is deliberately used uh, to avoid any resonance that could affect the relationship between pyramid and its underground surroundings. The Great Giza Pyramid, just like Nikola Tesla's Warden Cliff Tower, is erected over an aquifer. It is uh, purposeful because the value of the liquid water resonance frequency is very high. In this case, water prevents the construction from a wide range of resonant interference coming from deeper earth lies. Last but not the least, a recent discovery of a big void confirms this theory. There are two voids, the big one above the ascending passage and the small one aligned in a straight horizontal line with the passage to the Queen's chamber at the northern part of a pyramid. No brainer here at all. Scalar wave doesn't stop, doesn't get any weaker. Opposite to it, it gets stronger the longer it travels. Voids are very likely to neutralize electrical scalar wave after it left the passages. At the present, there is no way to describe how this can be done. Maybe it is something similar in its nature to the relieving chambers, and it works by the way of neutralizing the wave's resonant signature. Of course, it may be a device functioning on altogether different principles as well. And now the very last thing. Uh, imagine, there is the same resonance in all of the pyramid's uh, chambers and uh, passages. It is well known that all the pyramid's rooms share the same temperature, equal to the average Earth temperature. Pyramids outside walls were very smooth and inward, accepting resonance present in atmosphere. There should be the same resonance present everywhere throughout the pyramid. Think of Schumann's resonance. After lowering the multiple doors, which function as a on and off switch of the energy system, a resonant coupling between the chambers should come spontaneously into effect. Then it is followed by described before actions. It is important that those in on position block even if the same resonance in the king's chamber from contacting the great gallery's resonance. Uh, the Grand uh, Gallery has to stay resonantly independent from other pyramids' uh, devices. This is an indispensable element of the system understanding. Uh, it seems that the Great Pyramid was a perpetual power producer, sealed and left to produce power for centuries, serviced only from the level of the underground chamber. Marvelous and mysterious, 
absolutely precise with ingenious and pure simplicity of a design, beautiful and full of vital information. We heard this uh, have been said about the Great Pyramid many times before, and now, after this presentation, I wonder what can be said. While I cannot possibly be absolutely sure of all of my observations, I definitely got it pretty much close. What you have just heard and seen will not ever be sufficiently dismissed. In the past, the Great Pyramid of Giza was producing wireless electricity, and as the matter of its design, this is the only logical way it can be done. For the future, the question may be not how, but whom. And this is a serious question indeed, how little we know about the Earth's past. Why is it that we do not remember? We need to keep asking over and over again, hoping to find the answer in time before it is needed. By now we should have realized that we need to keep asking. I really hope that this presentation could start a new way of thinking about the oldest Egyptian pyramids. Have a look at what's inside the Great Pyramid. It is a device built with pure gravitation. The knowledge of resonance is used to build constructions out of gravitation, to direct gravitation the way so needed energy might be extracted out of it, and to distribute this energy required way. Gravitation is a resource, literally cut out inside the pyramid. We should understand that the Great Giza Pyramid is a mining and processing plant of gravitation in one. This exactly is the kind of technology pyramids were built to utilize, and most definitely not only for electrical energy extraction. I'm but a mature researcher. I never went to Egypt and I never saw pyramids on my own. Everything I know comes from various publications. All my technological knowledge and ability to put things like this together are a result of practical experiences of survival in a mind control environment. While, and I needed to say that very clearly, I never saw anything at all hinting at mind control in ancient Egypt, unfortunately, there really exists a clandestine world of mind control supported by technologies based on identical understanding. But there is a chance to call upon people with scientific minds to pick up this way of reasoning and to finally develop a totally overt branch of science that would bring back this great ancient knowledge. A word of caution here, there is much information hidden in Khufu's pyramid written in languages of geometry, mathematics and physical constants. We might be here after much more than simple energy production. I am not affiliated in any way with the scientific sources mentioned in this presentation. Of course, I do appreciate good science and always remain thankful for it. For those of you who would have greater interest in this technology, I'd like to encourage you to get accustomed with Professor Mayle's work. Nikola Tesla was this kind of scientist who did things in a practical way. Professor Mayle's work teaches how things work and can be achieved. I have already mentioned about Nikola Tesla building a scalar wave with wire in his Tesla's coil, and once again, believe it or not, the staircase underneath his tower. When you look at the Professor Mayle's work, you may start to wonder if DNA strain isn't in fact building similar kind of wave in biological bodies, not to mention its reception abilities, and this is when a whole wondrous science begins. I have no doubts whatsoever this is the future, and without it the science will not be what it is supposed to be. Well, this isn't at all everything, but it must be all for now. Thank you for watching my presentation, and may I ask, free energy, anyone?